Climate change changes everything, and it, it changes everything for the reasons Juan just outlined. We are on, it's already upon us, and we are on a road towards warming of four to six degrees Celsius. We only, we've, we've, we've reached 0.7 or 0.8 degrees Celsius, and we're already seeing these effects. Once you get to warming of that level, the models start to break down. I mean, climate scientists don't know what to expect. Things start going nonlinear. And, um, and so it changes everything about our physical world if we just simply do what we're doing and continue down this road. Um, so the argument I'm making in, in the book is we do have the opportunity to get off that road, but in order to do so, we have to change pretty much everything or some really fundamental things about our economic system. The good news is that the things we need to change, many of them are broken anyway. We need to make vast investments in the public sphere, which would create millions of good jobs. Um, we, need, we need to invest in health care, in, in education, um, in the sciences. Um, and in so doing, we will tackle one of the most intractable problems we face, which is gross wealth inequality. We can't fight climate change without dealing with inequality within our countries and between our countries. So the argument I'm making is really quite a hopeful one. I think if we do respond to climate change with the decisiveness that the scientists are telling us we do, if we respond in line with science, we have a chance to remake our economy, the global economy, for the better. Uh, and uh, But this is not going to be the kind of change that comes from below. It's going to—from above, it's going to be the kind of change that is demanded by mass movements from below. 